We got Ms. Chavi Daruwala, Ms. Jodi Ranjan, and Ms. Jessica Manglani. On behalf of ECDF, Early Child Development Forum, I welcome all of you to our session today. Thank you for being here. And the topic for the day is full focus on, uh, focus on full STEM ahead. So STEM learning in the early years, and it's very much essential for academic excellence. So I think we all believe in this topic and that is why we are here to talk about it today, right? So a very good evening to all who are watching us live on Facebook and a very good evening to all our speakers. And right now I would be just introducing you the speakers, uh, the speakers to you. So first we have Ms. Shami Daruwala, who is a passionate early years educator. She strongly believes in student-led inquiry-based learning. Jami is a Montessori trained educator with a diploma in special education. How lovely. She's a teacher with whom kids learn, enjoy, and grow up to be happy and responsible humans. What else do we need from an early childhood educator? Then we have Ms. Jyoti Ranjan, a historian, a professional archivist, a numismatist, a philatelist, and space educator, and an exhibitor. She is serving as Honorary Joint uh, Director Research with Foundation for Peace and Sustainable Development, which is a Delhi-based think tank. She's the founder of STEAM Space Consultancy Services. Welcome, Ms. Jyoti. Then we have Ms. Jessica Mangalani with us, and she is an IB PYP educator, of course, an inquiry-based learning again, a counselor and a teacher trainer. Her love for play and inquiry-based learning is deep-rooted. And previously, she has taught business and marketing to university students, but wanted to make some real difference. And that is why she wanted to teach right at the foundation level. The impact that the primary education has on society is inequitable, and that is what she believes in. So here she is that when she uh, also, another thing that about her is that when she sees parents trying very hard to give the best to their kids, but making the right choice is sometimes very complex. So she gives them an honest guidance. Right. So here we are, and we were going to start with Steve's, the, the full focus on STEM. Right. So ready to go? Yeah. Great. So for I, this was a very old quote, and I quoted here that the TA forum, from a child's point of view, we say, tell me and I'll forget. Show me and I may remember. Involve me and I will understand. Right? So here we are, and that is something that we all have to understand as educators and parents. So here I have a common question for all of you. I'll just put it across. And that is that when we see, uh, we see, we all know children are curious by nature, isn't it? And that is an innate quality in them. So STEM education and its evangelist always support and promote introducing the four disciplines that make STEM, the science, technology, engineering, and mathematics to children with the hands of, with the help of hands-on experiences, you know, in the early years and specifically uh, pre-primary and primary, it has to be a very hands-on experience for them. So do you agree that it lays the foundation for all future academic success? And also, should it be, what should it be? Should it be STEM, should it be STEAM, or should it be STREAM? So there are so many things to it. So is it restricted to science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, or should we add arts to it to make it STEAM? Or should we also add another R to it to make it STREAM? So should we add reading also into it? So my first, uh, I would like Ms. Jyoti to take the question first, and then we'll go to Ms. Charmi and then to Ms. Jessica. So Ms. Jyoti, what are your views on this? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, can you be just a little bit louder? Yeah, yeah, thank you so much for having me here. And uh, I will share my insights, like whether the STEM education should be STEAM or STREAM, and uh, what it means and how it was started. You know? Like STEM education is a term which was initiated by the National Science Foundation. And it was uh, like initiated by an assistant director of National Science Foundation, Dr. Judith Ramale. 
and it refers to an educational approach which combines not just science, technology, engineering, and maths, but also agricultural sciences, biology, physical sciences, psychology, economics, and other natural sciences and social and behavioral sciences also. So broad, broadly, it involves four disciplines like science. Science is a way of thinking which encourages investigation and answering questions. It also involves observing doing experiments, making connections, coming to conclusions, asking questions and wondering how the things work. Then comes the technology. Technology is a way of doing it. It refers to using simple tools, identifying problems, trying to solve it and being inventive to make it the things work. Then comes the engineering. Engineering refers to recognizing problem and testing solution. Then we have also added arts into it because arts encourages the creativity to the curiosity and allow children to illustrate the concepts that they are learning. Then maths is like, it deals with numbers and maths is everywhere. You know, and I want to uh, add a famous quote by the Galileo Galilei. He says that mathematics is a language in which God has written the universe. So maths is sequencing, counting, patterning, exploring shapes and volumes. So STEM is a philosophy where educators help kids to learn by integrating knowledge across disciplines and encourage them to think in a connected and holistic manner. However, now we are not only like talking about STEAM. Now we have actually added one more art to it because according to our national education policy 2020, the it has actually promote, it is uh, actually advocating foundational literacy and numeracy because, and it is, and there is an urgent and it's an urgent and necessary prerequisite for learning. The ability to read and write and perform basic operation with numbers is a necessary foundation for all future schooling and lifelong learning. However, the several government organizations and non-governmental surveys indicate that we are in a learning crisis. And a large number of students in India who have attained the age by the foundational, they don't have foundational literacy and numeracy. So it's very urgent to add this R into it, like so that they understand, they also have, uh, they also acquire the skills to read and write directly because even if they want to pursue a scientific career, they will have to write papers for journals or give a talk or participate in different kinds of seminars. Then their communication skill, writing skill, reading skill should also be up to the mark. So the national education policy gives highest to the universal found. And in fact, it goes on to say the policy would be irrelevant if the most basic learning requirement are not achieved. So STEM is like, why STEM in early childhood? Firstly, at this stage, the, the children need to understand why science and technology is so important for all of us. They are actually science and technology is all, or, all around us, like the sun, the stars, which make them wonder. And then the students, STEM education will help to students to develop better understanding of the world around him and relate to him. STEM involves introducing students to new concepts through activities and games. It essentially helps them live the concepts rather than just reading about them. So it is widely believed that STEM philosophy and its approach play a vital role in improving the economic and technological progress of a nation. However, there is a decline in a number of students Thank you, Ms. Jyoti. I think we are facing some technical issues with your network. Yeah, I think she's going to reconnect with us. Uh, until then, I would have uh, Ms. Chavi answer our question. 
So is STEM actually necessary for all academic success? And why STEM in early childhood years? And also, uh, should it be STEM, STEAM, or STREAM? So good evening. First of all, good evening, everyone. And like you already informed, like, you know, STEM itself is something that we can use hands on. We can do some hands on activities or experiments and learn better. So I would just want to add, like when it comes from STEM, it becomes STEAM and we introduce art. It's not only drawing and coloring. With art, also empathy, emotions, expressions, they all play an active role. So that's how arts is important for them to understand and empathize with one another because that's what uh, will help them be a better human, first of all. And when that becomes stream, reading comes into the picture. And like we all are aware, like we all have studied in school, reading, writing, it all becomes like very rote learning. Like we have to write a particular number of uh, pages. We have to complete a particular homework on and on. So it becomes very rote and it does not come naturally to them. It becomes like an added additional effort that they have to put in. So when we introduce reading and writing in terms of games or in terms of more hands-on approach, giving them that voice and choice, I think they start to enjoy it more rather than just taking it as a task. So when you ask me STEM, STEAM or STREAM, I definitely advocate uh, uh, stream because I think it just gives a holistic approach to learning and instead of keeping two different techniques like STEM would be hands-on and reading would go parallel with a different teaching way it would just be an added task even for the teacher and for the student to get that change or a switch immediately so stream is all the way is what I would suggest for kids to understand better and enjoy learning much more compared to more of teaching, the traditional teaching method. Right, that's so true. So over to you, Miss Jessica. What do you feel? Thank you. So STEM, uh, STEM something very close to my heart. Um, I have been practicing STEM in my classes for quite a long now, and I love it. So, as you've already mentioned, children are curious little me. We can nurture their natural instincts to question, build, and solve problems by offering them playful challenges. They want to explore every bit and bit around them. Being a mother myself, so many times I stop my child, no, don't touch that, leave that, and many more hindrances in her exploration. But it's time for parents and educators to understand that they are born inquirers who wish to explore their surroundings to the core and make new discoveries. Why? Why is such a common word for preschoolers? So many times we fail to acknowledge and understand the importance of this word, why? Questions are very important and questions are very common. Channelizing them in the right direction can lead their way to future global citizens. STEM is a perfect way to provide them experiential learning. STEM, STEAM or STREAM, either of it, it is an education that has received growing attention over the past decade. And not only child's journey starts into all four disciplines or five or six, but it gets exposed to much more than that. It aims at holistic development of the child. By challenging students to think out of the box, to fix something or to come out as a problem solver, be a risk taker, they serve the road to success in their near future. Now coming to the point of STEM, STEAM or STREAM, STEM includes subjects like science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. It may seem very daunting for a person like me, but at least they're congruent. But what happens when you add in the A for art? Your, you have STEAM, which gives STEM a whole new look and feel. Suddenly a hands-on activity includes artistic ventures. This can allow students who don't feel scientifically or mathematically inclined to feel more comfortable in representing their knowledge. It's just to make them more comfortable so that they can explore that area of art as well. Now add art to it. It is for reading. Now you have screen, a multidiscipline approach that starts to look like good cross-curricular teaching. 
but in my opinion i believe as teacher we no longer live in a single classroom bubble and neither do our students just gather your resources no matter which path you take team stem stream aim at hands on learning aim at the experience of the child aim at the learning of the child aim at not only the subjects that are included aim at much more than that aim at holistic development you know my uh, there is a very popular quote by maria montessori early childhood education is the key for the betterment of the society so that is what it is that is how playful challenges can lead to future global leaders and is much more and beyond those um, disciplines that we want to uh, include in the spelling or our imagination so true so uh, and of course uh, maria montessori also told us that uh, the basic first earlier six years are more important than the university years put together right because they lay the foundation and in the foundation years if children do practice stem and that too in a very play way experiential and hands on learning it is something that they would be uh, that would be staying with them throughout life and they would be eager learners they would be more successful academically that's true so let's come to the other questions that has been running in my mind and you know uh, wanted to ask you people uh let's go to uh, miss jyoti so miss jyoti my question for you is since early childhood is the best time like we all discussed right now uh, to in, you know in, actually introduce stem because it's the best time to develop new habits and build a foundation the stem skills would come as naturally as learning or you know learning to walk learning to eat learning to socialize so if that is introduced in these years like they are learning the many many skills they would imbibe these also uh, in their life right from the beginning which in turn will ascertain their future success like we were discussing so what according to you are the biggest challenges of implementing a stem curriculum in early years in a preschool and how can we overcome those challenges Ms. Jyoti Ranjan. Yeah, sorry, I could not hear you properly because your voice was cracking. Uh oh, I think yeah, there is a, some kind of a technical glitch there. Should I repeat my question? Yeah, please. Okay. there's a lag so by the time i say it and she hears it there's a difference right no problems this is the technical world that we are in uh I, what i was asking you miss jyoti is that since we are all agreeing upon stem to be introduced in early years and it would prove to be a foundation for future success and it can come very naturally to the children because right now they're learning all the skills what according to you are the biggest challenges that you see of implementation of stem in a preschool curriculum and how do you think we can overcome those challenges yeah yeah there are several challenges because stem is a new concept for preschool in fact it's a new concept for even the primary secondary or any kind of school because it's an integration or it's an it's an interdisciplinary approach so there are several challenges and the the first challenge is like the students bored them you know the research suggests that most of the students actually lose interest in science between the 12 to 13 years of age and it is simply because they don't have a good foundation in science and maths they have uh, they don't have a proper understanding of the subjects and a good way to counteract is this challenge is to inculcate the love for science early on in the students life and at this stage that we can introduce science and space uh, space science particularly which will make and make them familiar with the different kind of scientific term terminologies by uh, introducing some kind of a science alphabet space alphabet that we have created and they can there will be more familiarity when they will uh, actually read about this in detail so at this stage the children are most interested in drawing painting coloring art craft all these painting uh, activities 
and we so while introducing new stem terms in their curriculum we can also make it visually appealing and we can actually make our scientific uh, terminologies and do some coloring uh, assignments related to that because they all uh, we have to actually teach them in the language that they understand so like we can teach them like g for gravity like it's like we don't teach them g for gravity but like uh, just give for example with the help of a ball like on earth this ball will come down but when you will uh, when you are talking about space this will float why it is so simply because earth has gravity but in space there is no gravity there is very less gravity on other planets and that's why there is no life can exist there we cannot actually go uh, to those planets so similarly like the, uh, there are so many questions the children have and the teachers will have to have a scientific approach to answer those questions so we have to make the science concepts interesting like through the day to day example and not just like a textbook reading okay the children don't like textbooks you know uh, they want something outside of their textbooks so the another uh, thing like through which we can actually uh, make it more interesting is through science or stem storytelling our brains are hardwired for stories and we all love to read stories and the children uh, teaching stem through stories will actually arouse the child's curiosity at this stage and telling them the stories of the world famous scientists which are both motivational inspirational for them and these stories will break the stereotypes about the scientists we can also ask the how do the scientists really look like we can also raise uh, some role play of scientists like uh, the we you can have a fancy dress competition like to where they can don the hat of different kind of scientists the female scientists and the male scientists and all uh, like one of the child becomes a einstein the other becomes and what did he do there are four or five lines they can speak about it you know we have to make it like that this is what we are uh, which this is what i suggest you know to bring some changes and then combination of storytelling and hands on activities will play a great role in understanding the most difficult concepts so through storytelling the subject can become more meaningful and science theories can be contextualized into something that students can relate to so storytelling is also useful to illustrate the scientific concepts since stories are easily incorporated into the memories of the children so how are the biggest challenges uh, to, uh, to incorporate science storytelling in curriculum is the teachers preparedness for it because they have to combine stories with science so they will have to read some biographies of the scientists to create stories around them and their inventions so these are the major challenges i i believe and then there are like teaching without textbooks you know like uh, stem involves teaching without textbooks because it uh, it majorly actually for uh, believes in hands on learning so most children uh, struggle to understand the importance of science because they can't cannot see the connection between what they learn in the classroom and the happenings of the real world so the our textbooks are very very outdated you know like whatever we actually read the same stories are there in the cbsc textbooks uh, this is what i see in my son's class uh, in the uh, textbooks so they do not find it useful in their daily life they also have a perception of science subjects are either very difficult or very boring and here the teachers can take some initiative to teach science without textbooks like by arranging a visit to a science museum encouraging the stem hobbies which will develop their interest into science and technology teaching science and uh, maths with manipulatives like coins beads blocks rocks etc and that will like uh, teaching counting patterning with coins there there could be so many activities you know with this kind of manipulatives we just don't need to teach them only with the paper and pencil so another like role play i've talked about they can do a uh, role play also another big challenge is that we have we don't have scientists as role models in india you know like the cel the term celebrity is not associated with scientists we have to make them celebrities and uh, you have to call them as a guest speaker in your school and you know introduce them to your students they will tell their stories like you can call your any local scientific organization and even a doctor or a engineer who is working on a metro project they can actually 
you know, exchange their uh, whole experience about their jobs. And uh, the students will definitely find it interesting because uh, they always love to, you know, ask questions. And these kind of people will be, you know, love to answer their questions. So like in India, we have very few science, uh, science celebrities or scientific models. Whereas in American students have science celebrities like Elon Musk or Neil deGrasse, and there are several scientific which has gained significant public attention to the media. But in India, we don't have that kind of a tradition, you know. So the scientists also need their due respect, and the schools can play a great role in it. So there are like a biggest barrier. Another biggest barrier in STEM learning is cultural belief and societal stereotypes, you know. Like the science and maths are only for smartest kids, or they they can be like maths. Uh, they can only do maths and science at the higher levels. There's a deep rooted belief and misunderstanding that intelligence is fixed, whereas truth is that that intelligence is learned. We can uh, one can increase their intelligence through efforts and continuous learning. There's a very strong belief on the part of parents and society as a whole. If I was not good at maths. You know, my child don't have genes for maths, you know, and uh, they uh, they won't accept the fact, okay, you were not good at maths, your child could be good at maths and science. And similarly, like there are the, another gender stereotypes, okay, this uh, science and maths are not for girls, you know, what they will do. And uh, uh, there are no girl students in engineering colleges. And uh, this actually happens, you know, and uh, we have to make a lot of effort, a lot of effort, you know, at this stage you know, to break the stereotypes, to teach those young girls, like STEM is for everyone, all the children, there is no such male or female bias, it should be there. So they, they are like, uh, these kind of biases and challenges are there. And it's all about in our tradition or in the mindset of the people. Whereas I would like to give you an example that this is not true. Because uh, I will tell you like, uh, our ex-chairman of ISRO, Dr. K. Sivan, you know, he is the first graduate from his family. And uh, he was the chairman of ISRO and he studied in a Tamil medium school and there was nobody who was literate in his family. And he went on to become a chairman of ISRO. So those people who, have, who think that, okay, I don't have genes, my child don't have genes, can take this example. And similarly for the girls also, they should be encouraged by, you know, calling the female uh, scientists or female science professionals so that they can see as a role model, you know, these, uh, all these women and uh, telling them stories about the female scientists and astronauts that will, you know, arouse a curiosity and encourage the girls to pursue a STEM career later. Absolutely. So, so many good points given by Ms. Jyoti Ranjan here. Uh, the barriers that she spoke about are so obviously there that we even fail to notice them, in fact, because they become a way of life for us. So most of the parents and most of the children would be believing in something like this. We do not even considering them as barriers. We're not even thinking on the lines that she has just, you know, told us. So this was a real eye opener, I think, for most of the parents and the educators that please do not have gender biases, do not think about intelligence level to do science or maths or any other subject. STEM is for everyone and anyone can explore it. And of course, like we are just, just now discussing, if it is introduced in the early years, it's better because there the children will imbibe it and think in those lines in the scientific terms and the terminology. Another very good point given by Ms. Jyoti was about the stories. Yes, this age group, the children love stories and true stories which can teach them almost anything. We are definitely using stories in schools for value education, for teaching them concepts, then why not STEM? So this is something that I think we're all going to ponder upon. And that brings me to the next question that, you know, stories are there, yeah, STEM education, and there, there's something that's called, which is very, very important these days is are the 21st century skills. And when you talk about the 21st century skills, we come to the four C's that are required. And those are creativity, communication, critical thinking, and collaboration. And you all know those. 
Now, I would like to ask Ms. Chami, how do you think STEM can successfully be incorporated and implemented in early childhood education, the entire space, and also it can help in inculcating all these 21st century skills? So uh, before I answer your question on how they will help in those four Cs, yeah. I would just want to uh, mention this, like uh, ingenuity, when I talk about it, it is an inherent aspect of every child. So it lays a strong foundation of stream in each and every child. So you may be wondering, like, what makes me say that? So let me ask you this. So what happens when we keep a few random things in front of a child? So the obvious thing that comes to the child is to start using all the different permutation combinations with those things. So permutation combination, when I say math plays a role there, and what the child will do, it will just try to see if it's making sense or if it's working or if it's moving. So here comes science and engineering. Now, while doing all of this, the child is trying and babbling few words, trying to either describe it or talk to it and work around it. So here the language plays a role and the words that the child will be using would either be something that he may have heard or he would have read or something. So language also is there. In the end, if you notice, the child himself has made a game, a fun creative game out of those random things. So if you see technology and art is also playing their part. So by introducing stream or STEM, we just have to name it. I think it is more of just overall hands-on approach and it's just a different name to it. We are just categorizing it and giving each of them a name. And we are teaching the child that, okay, this is something that falls under science or this is something that falls under math. But in a way, it is something that is already there within the child and he's ready to explore it. So that is how uh, like implementation, talking about implementation, the first thing is science. When science come to you, uh, comes to your mind, like most of us, we have already spoken about this, that... Uh, use frequent questions like what, how, why, to encourage that curiosity, to build on that curiosity. And when you build on it, we can make like a question bank with them where the child is either noting down or you as a teacher noting down those questions. And based on those questions, we give them some follow-up hands-on experiments for them to do it and find those answers. This way we are helping build the curiosity, find uh, work on the critical thinking, find those answers themselves and build on the confidence that yes, I found the answers. I had those questions and I can do it. So that works on the confidence part also. Now, after doing this, science also involves something as basic as steps and procedures. So we can just make them understand anything, any activity that we do right from waking up to the time we sleep, each and everything has a step. Waking up, the first thing we do is we open our eyes. So we can make them understand that each and every activity has a step, has a sequence that we follow to make it all work. So that's how science and steps and procedures will come into their system and they will start making those connections that, yes, this is something that I'm doing. Like, it is not something that I have to mug up or I have to, you know, think and imagine in like hypothetical situation. Talking about technology, what we can do is uh, most of the time we hear parents saying, Are ye to pura din bas game khelti hai. Ya pura din, he's just on the device. But they don't understand that games do help in that critical thinking, in strategizing. Like it will be just a game, but even those 15 minutes, the child is using the entire power to either complete a level and move ahead or to, you know, get over with a game and find something else. So that is how technology comes into the play. And next comes coding. Now, there are many parents where, you know, I bring up the topic of coding and they're like, oh, no, no, no. Like, you know, for early years, coding is a lot. But if you notice, like there are some basic, basic games for coding. And what is coding? To get a particular task done, you have to add some steps. So if you just 
go on a particular website or find some games related to coding for earlier it is as basic as move a box from one corner to other and the child just has to use go left take a right go another left go another right so this way he's learning directions he's learning those ways to get out and solve that particular problem and get this cube or a box from one point to the other so technology plays a role there also having said that when we talk about technology with students with kids it is important to show them how it has changed our lives in terms of communication in terms of travel how things have changed like how things were for us when we were of their age that's how they will be able to make the connection and value the technology because right now at this age it is important we can give them the world but if they are not valuing those things it all comes crashing down true so this way we can let them value everything that they have around next comes engineering engineering i feel goes somewhere hand in hand with science so again we should use those uh, question words what why how and hands on activities and things available around would help them understand movement force how things work now when i talk about things around us it can be zip it can be buttons switches or something as simple as wheels of their toys let them explore let them open up a toy and just understand okay this is how the wheel is moving or this is how my car is moving this is how i apply the force and it's working so this is i think this is the best way to understand engineering let them rip apart a toy and just understand what uh, what is inside to make it move and last comes math so when i say math personally when i was a child math for me was like oh god again i have to sit for the lecture but we now i i can see kids are interested why because we are incorporating games you would be wondering what games like math is such a dry subject but something very simple as scavenger hunt treasure hunt i spy like i know so many kids they love the game i spy just with these games we can cover the concept of colors shapes numbers and i think th these are the key subject uh, key concepts that we teach for math again if we use uh, the things available around us we can also cover like topics like a one to one correspondence sequencing patterning so all of these concepts are the basis of early childhood uh, math this is what we are teaching them so we can make it into a game and we can teach now uh, coming to the last thing like how this is all connected to the four c's now this is something whatever strategies i have told you all of these strategies we are using in school so let me share an example of you know how uh, it just happened before we shut down for the summer break so because this year was about virtual learning and learning from home we had our uh, one of our sessions on zoom and we were exploring zoom features zoom filters with them because they are on the application we thought it's important for them to understand what all is available of course they were doing it under the teacher's guidance but they were all exploring it and that is something they loved so uh that's when one of the students she told that we all should use a same virtual background and it happened so that i did not have it in the system so i just told them you know what i'm really very sorry but i don't have this background with me in the system and to my surprise the child she unmutes and she's like you know what you can do miss you can just put me on spotlight i will move away you can take a screenshot of my virtual background and you can save it in your computer and you can add it as your background and the way she said it with so detailed steps in the end she thinks see problem solved and i'm just thinking oh my god it was something so basic but she could do it effortlessly and here i am just clueless how to do it i'm ready to give up but that child just you know to understand like if you see 
that child what did she do she just used her creative thinking thinking outside the box and she solved the problem so critical thinking plays a role communication comes in when she broke down all the tiny steps and she told me do this then do that now see it's all ready just to ensure that we are collaborating together as a team and we are doing something together so i feel this was one of the many examples that i've seen time and again that just helped me and you know it just fostered my confidence in stream and i was like yes we are on the right track the child knows what to do if there is a problem the child is not going to give up like a teacher like an adult who is like okay i don't know what to do let's do something else so i think that's the best way how the four c's are coming together for stream fabulous yes of course that's a fabulous example that you gave us and it does prove that all the four c's came together and like you said for the coding it's some steps that need to be broken down to reach for a certain point to a certain point and this is what your student just told you that you know she gives you all the steps you know you first have her in the spotlight then she will move then you take a screenshot then you save it and then use it as a background so that's just too many steps there okay so miss charmi how old was the student who gave you all these steps she, she was 5 and a half can you believe that 5 and a <laughs> half my gosh so we are on the right track when we say that step is necessary in early years it's early years that you're talking about people so here we bring in also what miss jyoti ranjan said before that you know there is a certain age and a certain intelligence required for this kind of uh, education it can only be done in middle and higher school if we talk about uh, stem in early years people have big eyes and they say kya isme kya padhaoge stem mein here you know what will you do with a preschool child i Think even the parents would be having these questions that what would you teach my four-year-old about STEM or about coding, as uh, we just discussed. But uh, what is missing is if, in case we do not have the right attitude to bring it in to the early years, because it can only be brought in through games and through a multiple other hands-on experimentation. Uh, question banks was a good idea by Ms. Charmi that if we also start collecting children's questions, I think we can have a research from that. So they will have so many questions. And when we tell them that, okay, you go and find out the answers, that's another very good thing instead of giving the answers, because I also, as an educator, never believed in giving answers to my children. I think they should find their answers for themselves. Great. Thank you so much, Ms. Charmi. So we now move on to Ms. Jessica. And Ms. Jessica uh, is practicing STEM and uh, she is into PYP. So we could ask her very easily. We can ask her that, you know, how STEM education in preschools provide and help children with opportunities to learn creatively. Uh, making use of all these four century, uh, 21st century skills, apart from the four C's that Ms. Charmi just discussed about, they, we have the early literacies that we need to talk about. And not only the early literacies, now it is information techno uh, literacy, there's media literacy, and there are so much more to education now. How do you think STEM education can help us with these opportunities? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. There is a lot more. Um, Thank you, Ms. Charmi, for telling us about your five and a half year old child. I have also dealt with five and a half year old children. And I truly believe that this pandemic has given them that opportunity to learn and to have that hands-on experience with technology much more than us. Like you said, even I keep on asking my children, oh, okay, how I need to do this? Can you please tell me? I'm not able to do control. So yes, it, it, it's amazing to see how um, children are able to uh, answer the questions uh, much more confidently. But, uh, you know, the saddest part is that our education system is tasked with preparing the next generation to succeed in life, and that is all. The, our education system is only focusing on that paper that we get after completing a course. That's a tall order, and it will substantially fail if it doesn't teach children how to think critically. How to solve problems. This is what we are looking forward to. When we talk about next generation, we do not want people with degrees. We want people to actually think critically. We want people to 
solve problems, to fix it. We need managers to give solutions and not the problem. Educating students in STEM subjects prepares students for life, regardless of the profession they choose to follow. That's not what we consider here. Those subjects teach students how to think critically and how to solve problems, skills that can be used throughout the life to help get through tough times like this pandemic. Take advantage of opportunities wherever they appear. In this pandemic also, I'm sure we all know there are opportunities, but probably you and I would fail to look at if we prepare our next generation in such a manner where they're able to take the opportunities the tough time provides. How about that? It helps them become better at research. Think critically. Technology prepares young students to work in an environment full of high tech innovation. And one very good example has already been given. Engineering allows students to enhance problem solving skills and apply the knowledge in their real life projects. Each and every STEM class is designed to allow children to communicate their thoughts, be creative, and explore new concepts in themes. STEM education helps children become more and more independent with the application of technology and science, while also focusing on soft skills in teamwork and self-management. This is the addition of four C's. STEM skills such as problem solving, collaboration, communication, adaptability, and critical thinking are the soft skills that allow students to apply knowledge they acquire in school to real world problems, the real world situation. That is what we are looking forward to when we say next generation. Working on STEM projects helps students integrate life skills by fostering important concepts, such as, again, communication, whether sharing ideas or findings or explaining a topic, the ability to get their message across effectively is very vital for students. STEM lessons encourage students to communicate their questions, reflect on their learning, and explain what they did to solve a problem to their best ability. It gives them that opportunity, that stage where they gain that confidence where they own their own learning. Yes, I have done this. I am the one who created this. Why I created, how I created. Process, content, product, or process. Collaboration and STEM lessons students work with their classmates. They are working towards a common goal. They want to achieve something together. Collaborative hands-on activities allow each student to to contribute, to shine, to work as a good team member. Students practice working in team, listening to one another, empathy, respecting, being principled, accepting others' point of view. When a task is accomplished by the entire class, everyone celebrates the success. And there is no one who is left out. Critical thinking. STEM lessons also require students to use analytical skills, to look for patterns, for make predictions. What if I do this? How is it going to come out? Determine if their predictions are actually correct or not, and then use data to support their claim. Evidence, how I did it. Students learn to make decisions based on scientific data that supports the best solution. And that scientific data has also been collected by them. This ownership of learning is immensely rating. This gives them practice in the skills they will need to make informed decisions in their everyday life when they come out, when they come out of the school. Problem solving in an open-minded STEM assignment, there may be multiple ways to get successful to solve the problem, to fix something. Students work to come up with their own solutions. There's nobody helping them. There's nobody facilitating them. They're just working. They're trying tirelessly. 
I have been in a class where the student was trying to make a bridge for Goldilocks, and she took like seven days to do that. And trust me on this, after seven days, she came up with such a nice bridge with all scrap materials. She always used to come ten minutes before the class used to begin. Eight o'clock, my school used to begin. She makes sure that she would be there at seven forty-five and uses those fifteen minutes. for her own independent inquiry that's the zeal that is the power when the student gets into her own learning the student is willing to try student is ready to take risk student is ready to make an outcome which is different it is okay to be different how can i do it differently that is what we need to know stem lessons help students embrace that idea that it is okay to fail multiple times like she took 7 days i'm sure in those 7 days she must have failed ample number of times but she didn't give up that zeal that enthusiasm the multiple times failure just because they want to succeed that one time it's a game where students can restart and try again as many times as they want that is the 21st century skill that we are talking about never give up go on adapt because environment is bound to change how are you going to adapt stem helps them finding out the world and how it is working exploring looking for relationships patterns generating explanation and loads of ideas exploring tools skills evaluating as closely as they want as closely as they require to come to the desired outcome which has been designed by them so that there is a lot more dedication than otherwise understanding that process to solve a problem is in itself an art it is a journey that the student is taking probably you and i won't understand because how difficult it would be to make a bridge tak 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 and tak no that student doesn't even know how to roll out a tape for them it is a journey chance to quantify assess map various expressions so i believe that stem education truly truly ignites truly ignites and gives the opportunity to students to prepare to be a successful in 21st century work workforce and in life it gives them opportunities to use assorted materials and tools where people explore ideas together create and invent creativity is equally important as a means of adaptation stem empowers students to see concepts in a very different way in a different light which leads to the innovation innovation is the key to adaptability and overall success transform young minds into the innovators thank you okay thank you so much miss jessica that was a very passionate talk and we the love for stem came right through and you gave us such beautiful pointers uh, you know and the, the value and the importance of stem came through in your talk very very quite uh, efficiently because we came to know about resilience like you know about the student who would not give up maybe they are failing maybe they are retrying and they are trying to get it right but where are we giving them that space as educators as parents we need to question ourselves that are we hurrying them up somewhere do do we give them that space that time for exploration do we are we giving them that kind of a uh, opportunity where they can explore their own uh, passions their zeal like the student who was making the bridge for the goldilocks and now see how many things can we put across to it why does goldilocks need why did she need a bridge what kind of bridge is she making 
uh, and you know how did this thing come to her mind there are so many questions to it that can actually be related to stem and also to the 21st century skills because that would involve creativity it would inquire uh, you know it would involve inquisitiveness taking initiative being productive being responsible for your own creation like she said it's their own learning and the kind of confidence that they get exercising their choices uh, then they, uh, like uh, Ms. Jessica said, and we all in fact said it somewhere or the other, uh, is that STEM is empowering. It is something that's igniting that passion in children. And the end result is that there is a lot of transformation in thinking skills because they become more analytical. They can predict what is going to happen. The cause and effect factor comes here to play that they know, okay, okay if I do this, what's going to happen next? all these queries and all these things instead of now giving the answers to them on a platter is something that we have to devise and we have to define in our education system that the children should be looking for these answers themselves and they can happily and easily do it if we include stem in the right manner in the early years so thank you so much to all the three of you for giving us so many pointers and there's so many takeaways that we're taking. I would give one minute each to each one of you to just close the session and tell us your views of how did you feel talking about it and, you know, our overall, if you have any message for the educators and the parents, please go for it. But remember one minute each. All right. So Ms. Chami. Yeah, so uh, just to conclude, like you said, like it is on us as educators, as parents to give them that environment where they can just flourish. It's okay if they are taking time. It's okay if they're asking too many questions because no question is like, you know, there are times where parents say, oh, that's so silly question. No question is silly. silly question. There is definitely some thought process going on in their mind. And that's why they're coming up with those questions. So please just encourage those questions. In fact, counter question them. Counter question and that's how it will keep the engine running. And that's what we want. Let them find questions. Let them find answers themselves and size the limit for them for sure. Absolutely, counter question them. That reminds me of a, of an incident where uh, a little four year old went to her mother who was expecting the second baby, and then she said, "Where did I come from?" Now uh, these days, parents have a feeling that they must answer everything very correctly and very scientifically because no more uh, fables, no more the stock left you, and no more like you know you came from the moon or the Santa Claus or something like that. Mm -hmm. So no more of these. Now this mother was in a fix of what did she tell her because uh, as adults we don't go down to the children's level and think about it. So when the girl asked the mother, uh, "Where did I come from?" So the mother is in a fix. So is to get out of the situation, she counter a questioned her and she said, where do you think you came from? And, the, <laughs> and you, the, the beauty of the part is that children being so innocent and, you know, at when you go in, inside their world, if you understand, she said, oh, you don't even know this. All children come from hospitals. So that, <laughs> so it was like, you know, that's not wrong. And uh, they, they do not need to know the entire fact. So in fact, in our brain, we'll be going like, how did I, where did I come from? I, what do I tell her? So this is like, if you counter question them, they can in fact come up with uh, very beautiful answers. In fact, there was one other educator who was saying that they were talking about the food chain and they were just talking about, okay, what all uh, good balanced diet do you eat? And they were asking her that, where do you get... Um, meat from or do you get to, uh, fruits from where do you get vegetables from so fruits and vegetables are something that they knew that plants give us and things like that now when the question came to where do you get meat from there was um, a proper silence in the classroom and they did not know what to answer so then again then she said okay let's simplify where do you get the chicken that you eat from so there was just one hand that was raised and that the uh, child said it comes from mcdonald's so you see, the thing is, when you question them back, you get answers and you also get an insight into their world, So, which is not that complicated. Right. Uh, Ms. Jessica, your thoughts, please. Oh, well, I will only like to close, uh, like as, as educators and parents, let's focus on holistic development, experiential learning. It, it is utmost important. 
STEM opens a whole new world for the child. Let them own their learning. Let them work towards the outcome. Let them know that it is okay to be different. Learning can be fun. So let's focus on playful challenges. It's not only math and science. There is much more to it. So. Absolutely. And math and science are not scary subjects. We don't have to be scared of them. So let's come out of that thought process and it should not be scary for anyone anymore. Ms. Jyoti, your thoughts, please. Yeah, I would like to just say that the STEM investment is the best investment and it is not just for the best and the brightest. It is for every school going child. And uh, we need STEM empowered students because in future, the students will have to come, not the students will have to compete with not just human intelligence, the human intelligence will have to compete with the smarter machine intelligence. And I'm talking about AI. And for that, STEM will provide a foundation. And that is why there is an urgency to introduce STEM in the schools at every level, right from the preschools. Thank you so much. Absolutely. So when we are dealing with unprecedented times, we never knew that we we're going to be hit by COVID-19. We never knew that the world would be under lockdown. We never knew that preschool can be online uh, because it was always physical. It was always hands-on and we had to be in the class. So we could have never ever imagined that we would be coming into this world like this. This will be the new normal. So that's why STEM is very important because tomorrow, what holds for us, what's in store for us, we never know. And these children, the millennials, the children, the uh, alpha generation now, which is going to grow up, we don't know what the world has in store for them. And the times they have to be adaptable. They have to think out of the box. They have to be resilient. They have to collaborate. The world is a very small place now. So because we are all online, so of course, the world is such a, such a small place that they will learn to communicate, to collaborate and to think out of the box. And for that STEM, I think is the need of the hour. Let's incorporate STEM and let's give them the opportunities to think for themselves and answer their own questions, right? So thank you so much for being here with us. And thank you for all the of you who are watching us live on Facebook. I, Smriti Akarwal. On behalf of Early Child Development Forum, ECDF, and Dr. Vasya Chargia, I'll sign off now and do to ponder upon these thoughts and give us your comments and ask us your questions. We'll have all these three wonderful ladies answer your questions if you come up with something. I think there's a network issue there. Yes. Um, I think we all should exit since she's gone. Yeah.